Welcome back to another episode of Dark Souls 2 Lore Through. Uh, we ended up here in the Black Gulch, and I have quite a few things I want to speak uh, about, but um, we have a lot to do this episode, so I'm just going to go ahead and explore the area. Um, hmm. There doesn't seem to be any, uh, statues here. out. Let's see here. I'm gonna... Um, my cat's getting vocal. So yeah, I came through here. I was just checking some stuff out. So I did take out some of these. I figured reloading the game would bring them back, but it didn't. Um, so yeah, here's the tar pits that we saw and the other thing. Uh, up in the gutter, and you can see there's a little tentacle sticking out of this one, so... I, uh... Those are supposed to be the tar itself coming out to get you. I don't know how effective that is. Um, yeah, let's see if we can get this. I guess these don't shoot at you. Shovel and great magic weapon. Wow, we have 10 Estus already. A uniquely shaped curved sword, the name of its creator is unknown, but he was clearly a two craftsman. The curved blade is designed to reach around the opponent's shield to, to deal damage. I did not know that. Um, and then let's see. We might have read great magic weapon. The old pursuits of the Melfian Magic Academy view swordplay as a barbaric form of engagement. So. So yeah, there's um, a couple of places here where we can drop down. Uh, is this the first one? Where is it? Yeah, right here. Um, and this is where we'll find Lucatiel for this area. Oh, you, my thoughts are very scattered. <sighs> what is this curse? question rings in my mind, but I haven't the focus to answer it. What is the curse? She's asking now. I don't know if that's just that she is trying to figure out like a deeper meaning, or is she actually forgetting what the like curse is? Loss frightens me no end. Loss of memory, loss of self. If I were told that by killing you, I would be freed of this curse, then I would draw my sword without hesitation. I don't want to die. I want to exist. I would sacrifice anything, anything to me for this. It shames me, but it is the truth. So again, I'm... Uh... Quite a bit more insight into the hollowing process from someone that seems to, you know, be capable of understanding it. And uh, loss of self, loss of memory are the biggest, scariest things, and it's hashtag relatable, as they say. <laughs> but I just think that this, you know, whole thing is very eloquently put, and it just kind of 
makes you think about all the hollows that you see and how they went through all of this, you know, before they became zombie-like. Sometimes I feel obsessed with this insignificant thing called self. But even so, I am compelled to preserve it. Am I wrong to feel so? Surely you do the same in my shoes. Probably should have gone and killed those Maybe all cursed. worms up the there. We're born. Okay, so a little bit of Buddhist philosophy almost, uh, or Hinduistic philosophy about how being born or you know, you acquire the self through learning, and that's the real curse. And that, shit, wouldn't it just be better if you could just let it go and just go hollow, and you wouldn't have to torment the fear of losing the self? You're trying to hold on to something. Sometimes I. Maybe I will in a moment. I was like, why did you stop? the oil to me, but that's apparently what it's supposed to be. Um, I'm just going to put these down on my bar here, just because. Over here, they're pointing right at you. So we get scraps of life, which I believe we already got, or we already read. Yeah. In any case, uh,. We've read this before. The only thing to note is that it awakens the souls of the long buried dead, um, which is similar to the whole resurrection thing that he's going for. So once again, I don't know if this is a uh, an NPC or a, just a normal. I feel like it might be an NPC here. 
Woodland Child Vicar. Victor. If Child Vicar would be interesting. divine blessing down here for some reason. So it looks like there's a uh, dragon of some sort over here. Dragon bones, which I guess in this game, I guess all Dark Souls games, but that's particularly important here. an area up there. So yeah, maybe once you break these, they're permanently broken in Scholar because, you know, I mean, maybe it's when you die or something, but I, I had broken them, end of the game, And then they were all gone, so I don't know. Well, that was close. I'll break them for now. Hoping that they will stay as such. Okay, I'm almost gone with all of these. That's crazy. Wonder how we get up there. He says quizzically. So yeah, we have enough fragrant branches of yore at this point to uh, definitely spend one to get this bonfire. I mean, they give you like three in the gutter. Hit that thing somewhere in there. So I guess it makes sense. Um, sure. Hidden chamber. The question that I pose myself is how much my poison arrows and lacerating arrows plus I have poison throw we have quite a few pro uh, poison throwing knives yeah it's all broken that's cool so it's only uh, you know the enemies Woodland Child Gully. What's with these child things? I mean, it's the same person. I mean, is it... Is it someone? A 
that is still alive somehow. He's fighting the same way, but he could be just a recurring NPC, I guess. <laughs> Woodland Child Gully, what does it even mean? If he's an invader and a hacker at that, he's not very good. Okay. Alright. So, now we're gonna go... Oh, crazy. Should not lock onto these guys, that me thinks. Okay. So now there's an area down here. And yet another one of these doors. Which is locked. But then there's yet another place which is so much not <laughs> it doesn't look like you should be able to walk here um and i think i'm gonna go on the left side so now we encounter some interesting like we've encountered these giants here which you know we fought what was called the last giant and yet now we're here and there's actual like not hurt and not um they're just regular giants still alive and well so it's kind of interesting i'm gonna take this off so these guys do really poorly against uh poison so i'm gonna they can hit in here though do some fire just to kind of speed it along um, I don't find a point to really taking on these guys together I mean I guess cred points but it just seems like a, a pointless task especially when there's two uh, I think it's three arrows Four? There we go. Especially when, you know, you have, you know, these caves here that just make it so easy. I mean, they used to attack in here, but I, I'm not really seeing it. rumbles every time he takes a step. I guess the AI of this one has been a little improved. He's trying to avoid... There we go. He's trying to avoid <laughs> the opening, which I guess is better of him. I mean, at this point, I suppose I could fight him mano a mano, but... Does he even hit in here anymore? Oops. Stop pleading at the last second. 
Okay. So anyway, we got the forgotten key and uh, Soul of a Giant, which are both new. Key found in the gutter, intricately designed, but of unknown origin. All manner of terrible things have been cast into the gutter in Majula, forming a settlement of filth and chaos. Okay, and what a soul of a giant. The soul of a giant who came to conquer Drang Lake. Will the giant's resentment for the king be pacified in death or only emboldened? Can he be used to acquire souls or or, or only so um is this possible to walk over? No, probably not. Um I don't wanna I don't wanna jump. <laughs> At best it's probably a soul, so those can actually hit you too, by the way. I've gone up and down trying to do stuff here and uh, yeah, those uh, those can hit you even when you're going up. Okay, so now that we have this forgotten key, we now Oh god, that scared me. We now can open these doors. So yeah, I mean there was something in here with a circle on top. I don't really know much about like some of the design when it comes to this stuff, but if you look at the key it's similar, like it has that circular thing on top and whatnot. I should have killed that thing yet again, it's gonna make more noise. But anyway, there's a guy here in a wheelchair, not to be mistaken by Falcon. However, both of those guys seem to be taken by the dark, and they're both in a wheelchair. Oh, look how far this undead has wandered. And a very fit undead you are. A bit too alive, but with a dark shadow. Yet still unprepared for a deeper death. And like every undead, you have no future. Oh my, don't mind me. I'm just talking amongst myself. But if you find the need for a truer dark, then meet again. We shall. I think this is weird mechanics. So, I mean, A, I don't need to have any faith or uh, um, intelligence requirements. Uh, as you can see, I reallocated now I'm 14 and 4 again. So I can talk to him no matter what my stats are. And in order to get more dark, he just requires that I find him again, which I wouldn't imagine has anything to do with dark. Maybe if it was an explorer's covenant or something, and that would be a cool covenant. <laughs> you get rewarded for exploring, essentially, like treasure hunter covenant. That would make sense, but dark, I'm not sure. The dark is still nascent within you. May the dark shine your way. The dark. Yeah, so... We have to find him twice more, and then we can see what he's all about. Alright, so now we're going to take on the boss. And the thing that I wanted to talk about really quick before we uh, got too deep into this is that I was thinking after I recorded the last episodes that we had yet another example of a spirit, a soul, a thing inhabiting another thing when it came to the Lord's souls. So the lost sinner was possessed by the Isolith bug. 
Um, so the Lost Sinner and the Isolith and Controlling were separate entities. The Old Iron King was Icarus Earth, although I don't know if we've gotten that name from an item description yet. But the Old Iron King was Icarus Earth, and the soul of the Old Iron King possessed that being. And the Duke's Dear Freja, Freja was the writhing ruin. So, you know, a thing only described uh, when it, uh, from that item description and uh, Shalquar's description, which I didn't realize was actually when Shalquar says it, she does, I don't know if she says it with a capital W, a capital R. So we might go check out her dialogue again after this because she talks about everything now that we've kind of talked about stuff. Um... But that just leaves the rotten, you know, and, and we'll talk about it after we uh, fight him. But it just makes me think that, I mean, this is just something that I, uh, um, you know, I've just been thinking about nowadays. And um, this is, oh, great. So, if you homeward bone, then they come back. Didn't even give me a chance. All right. So good to know. I was just gonna walk around like whatever, but I'll go and uh, clear out everything again, and then I'll summon people because I know that th this is. I mean, at least in the past, I think there's more summons, so that might help. But in the past, this was the. Uh, This was the hardest one to get Luca Till to not die on. And I, you know, I honestly don't remember what we summoned her for before, so I'm just gonna try to make sure she doesn't die here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, thought there was one of those up there that you couldn't really hit, but not the case. But yeah, every time she came in and got poisoned, you know, it just makes her chances of her winning so much less. But maybe that isn't even a requirement anymore in the Scholar of the First Sin. Okay. Maybe, uh... Maybe they just make it so they have to find them each time. Which would be good. nice. But I'm not taking any chances. Hmm. They dropped shards. That's good to know. I'm gonna kill everything here. Just because... Oops. Um, I know that there's more summons, and they're up here. They could get into trouble. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. Um, just in case sitting at the bonfire somehow was the thing that did that again, I'll re-up my health here. Um, and let's get Luca Teal. So I don't know where the other... Maybe you can only have one person summon. Oh my gosh. Um, I thought it was up here. But, like, in here. Around this area. Like, right here. But maybe it's only one person. 
And if that's the case, we're going with Luca, and that means that I gotta make sure that, you know, she doesn't die. So, I'm gonna try and buff myself a little bit. Uh, fire won't do anything. Poison. Try that. Poison, what am I even talking about? Probably immune to poison. I mean, the giants weren't, but I'll just go with good old gold rind, pine resin. I love this cutscene, by the way. I mean, love is maybe a strong word, but. Makes you think that maybe the rotten had something to do with this being made, or at least he cares that they stay assembled. Gives him a little humanity. to me. Oh, goodness. You can cut his arms off. Which is kind of interesting. Also, there's a guy on his left shoulder up there, and he kind of does what the rotten does. Okay, this is bad. Oh gosh, I didn't even realize I'm almost dead. Okay. It's a little quick off the draw. Oh god. <laughs> oh my god. That was not even fun close. Okay. That was easier than than the original. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I just played it recently, trying to get Lugatil to survive, and um, yeah, I had to try like 50 times. Um. So yeah. Um. Two final words on the Great Souls. A. That clearly was... I mean, it isn't as explicit... Let's read the, uh... Let's read the soul. Just to... Soul of the rotten, who writhes deep within the gutter. The rotten embraces all in his sanctuary for all things unwanted or tossed away. Use the special soul of the rotten to acquire numerous souls. Um, so... The Rotten is the only one that doesn't explicitly talk about anything possessing it, although, and I'm pretty sure any of the items you can make from the soul don't either, but, um, you know, I think it's self-evident, just similarly to the Lost Center. I mean, we see a bug climb into her mask, or, yeah, its mask. It could be a he. Um, we say her usually because the description says she, and it's probably the Witch of Isolith, but... Anyway, cries and collides into the mask, but doesn't say anything about it being possessed. Um, you know, only the Iron King and, and the Duke's dear Freya did they do that. And so maybe it's just evident with the Rotten that the Rotten is obviously a pile of corpses strung together by a chain that somehow acquired a soul to become something else. Um, so it's 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 just an interesting. There's a lot of congruency in this game when 
<laughs> there's also a lot of non congruency as well and I think that that's a cool point especially one that people don't put together a lot a lot of the time the other thing I'll say is my last thing is that the, you know the four Lord souls are obviously meant to represent um, the four souls that were found in the f flame well not 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 the ones found in the flame but uh, meant to represent the kind of Lord souls that we see in uh, the first dark souls so we have the lost sinner which Ooh, yes, I forgot. This is the first time we meet this character. I will pause for a second. Uh, well, I guess I can finish. So, Lost Sinner is Isolith. Old Iron King is Gwyn. Um, again, when you play them in um, New Game Plus or use a bonfire static, which I might do instead of doing a whole New Game Plus run, uh, you get a second soul every time you beat. So you get um, the old witch soul, uh, the old king soul for old iron king, and then for Duke Sir Frey you get the old pale drake soul, and then for the rotten you get the old dead soul. So old the rotten is like Nito, as he kind of looks and is similarly he's made up of bodies like Nito, and he has area of attack like Nito, etc., etc. So. Um, the only things that all those individual souls say, they don't really give a lot of lore into what they are, but they do say that the souls still have influence over the land. And so I think it's safe to say that even if it's in a thematic manner, they're trying to show that these things are possessing objects in the world. Um, and, and most definitely, you know, the actual souls themselves being the, you know, remnants or shadows of the original souls even though they're not the original four souls because of course the dark soul was broken up into humanity and uh, Seath only had like a, f a fragment of Gwyn's soul but so had the four kings so yeah I don't know it's close it's very close anyway <laughs> so we tried to go to the bonfire the primal bonfire and we got blown back, although we didn't take any damage for it. And then this thing comes out of the earth. I believe it's for um, getting all four. In other words, I think he would come out at any given bonfire. He's really hard to understand, unless they fix the voice acting in this one. So we'll just have to read. <laughs> Then accept the fate of your guilt and face the trials that await you. And yes, you have already joined the Crestfallen. <laughs> no, I'm ready to go. Yamato, there are but two paths. Inherit the order of this world, or destroy it. Only a true monarch can make such a choice. Very few indeed have come even this far. And yet your journey is far from over. I've grown what it takes, truly. <laughs> Young Hollow, seek after Venric. He who almost became a true monarch. The Venric is certain to guide your way. Fledgling Hollow, may we meet again? I think we can suffice it to say that that thing was the scholar of the first sin. And uh, we can talk about him later. Um, 
He also says that we need to go seek Vendrick, which, you know, um, what the Emerald Herald told us as well. Um, by the way, this is another DLC, which evidently I probably won't be able to get to. I need the keys. So I can't wait to see Vendrick. You know, Vendrick is certainly a lot. I mean, so obviously this guy knows Vendrick, so he's um, either really old or of this time. He doesn't speak about Olifus, Ven, or Alkin. He talks about Vendrick. Um, and, you know, I'm certainly excited to meet Vendrick, considering all this. I mean, he's almost became a true monarch. He looked into the and found the essence of the soul and did some crazy stuff with that, apparently. And but he left at the height of the um, giant war and we don't know where he went and I'm really anxious to find out where he went and what we're gonna do when we get there is we have to decide whether we're going to be a true monarch or not well I mean whether we want to re retain the order or we want to get make go into chaos I don't necessarily like that wording of it I'm gonna still do what I did in Dark Souls 1 because I believe it to be the most pure way to do um, these games in the sense there's not really the, the, an analog to Koth and anything in this game but to me I think cycles should continue I don't think that they you know we should be stuck holding on to something forever I think they need to let go of um, the Age of Fire or whatever and uh, and get into the Age of Dark, and although it didn't really do anything in Dark Souls 1 either, so <laughs> I will just do it to be consistent. Um, okay, I don't believe anyone says anything, and I don't think that the Rotten has any uh, items. You need armor. No. Oh. Are you sure? Yep. Maybe you have to buy more stuff too. I don't even remember. Uh, let's get him hey. to do the biggest ladder. What are you up to? Um, also, I'm going to um, buy this mat this miniature. And what? You're hidden down now. Yeah. Well, well. That's fine. I already went all the way. And came well, back. really? I'm very... I get such a warm feeling inside when I get the chance to help others. Something <laughs> makes me think that's not true. Oh, there was that ladder that was just sitting on the ground there. Why didn't I just put it there? Hey, this ladder's not for sale. What? The, the only things I sell are miniatures. I mean, if that tickles your fancy, you can buy as many as you like. <laughs> That's not true, even. You only had the one. Here you are, my friend. You can have these, hey? It's a little bonus, you know. For your big purchase. Huh. Oh, come on. Don't look so glum. I'm trying to be nice here. You're hopeless, I tell you. <laughs> what? You wouldn't believe... Okay. Uh, okay. Let's read what he gave us. Scimitar of Laddersmith Gilligan. Nothing notable about this weapon except perhaps the luxurious jewels embedded on the hilt. If your aim is to appear dazzling on the battlefield, this might just do the trick. In other words, he might be a bit of a charlatan. Concerned with looks rather than... Yeah. You know. actual warrior capabilities. Uh, as much as it pains me, I'm going to see what Kale has to say. Even more... 
but there is something essential. Yeah, okay. Um, I guess one thing that we can do now that we at least have some levels, so I can go and look at these pigs. They're like really miniature versions of uh, the pigs we saw in Brightstone Cove, Tildora, and they drop, well, they used to drop cracked red eye orbs. Anyway. Um, let's talk to Shalquar and see if she. Well, you've grown quite a bit, haven't you? Yeah. Your scent is lovelier than it's ever been. <laughs> Why not trot along to the castle and meet the king? I plan to. Long ago, he smelled just like you. Not so much anymore, though. He's quite rancid by now. But we cats love that. It's an acquired taste. <laughs> Maybe that's why my cats like me so much. Um, so, I, in the first game I talked about how souls, I think, determine the size of, of something. The theme isn't as prevalent in this game, but... Um, she certainly implies that having more souls makes you smell different. And that Vendrick at one point smelled like this. In other words, he had the souls or he had, had enough power, whatever. So that's kind of interesting. It also implies that Vendrick um, was here. As I say, implies it. You know, Shalquar could have been somewhere else. But something leads me to believe that um, Vendrick was here. Not sure. If, if that's the case or not, but... Once, people tried to round up the undead and hide them away from the world. They thought that imprisoning the undead would solve the problem. They created a towering Bastille to contain them, but in the end, it did no good. The lost sinner lives deep within the Bastille. The fool, trying to light the first flame. So yeah, um, talking about the, <laughs> the um, lost sinner, trying to light the first flame, as if that's her sin. And we talked about that before. Um, makes you think of Scholar of the First Sin. You know, what's the first sin? I don't know if I talked about this before. I'm recording these, like, over a period of a month, so... Um, I don't really recall what I've talked about. But I will say that I believe that the first sin is Gwyn lighting the flame and making it extend the Age of Fire which created the Undead Curse, which is why it's a sin. And it happened before uh, Isleth tried to do it, as she had created Chaos long before the dragons. She had the Daughters of Chaos. She used Chaos against the dragons. Then she tried to recreate the First Flame when, I think, maybe when um, Gwyn failed or in conjunction with it. Um, like, she didn't really know what happened. I'm not sure. There's probably some, you know, description that explains exactly what happened. But, um, then she got the chaos out of control. It was no longer in control. And that's when all the demons got created and she sinned. So maybe hers is the second sin. Scholar of the second sin. But anyway, the scholar of the first sin is obviously studying what Gwen, what happened to Gwen. In my opinion. <clears throat> Why do people try so hard to be beautiful? We cats are born beautiful, of course. <laughs> the human ego. How many ugly iron castles has it erected? One they in this game. can see the folly of their ways. But that's what makes watching humankind so delightful. <laughs> 
It reminds me of someone who lived long ago. A vainglorious liar who ended up hurling himself into the flames. Hmm. Now he's Icarus Earth, if I'm not mistaken. There's Icarus Earth mentioned. Yeah, so that reminds her of the old Iron King, even though the first thing that she talked about was the old Iron King too, so I don't know why. <laughs> she said, oh, how many, you know, oh, the old Iron King created something, you know, because of his ego. It reminds me of the old Iron King. Well, of course it would. Or maybe she was talking about Gwyn for a second, I don't know. But Icarus Earth, I mean, since Gwyn is Icarus Earth, I mean, that could be what she's saying. Um, because the old Iron King does drop Gwyn's soul eventually. And it's the old Iron King that inhabited Icarus Earth, so perhaps they are the same. I don't know. You've seen that gaping hole here. Well, there's nasty little vermin down there. Although who you seek is even further below. And has been down there for a very, very long time. He's plum rotten by now. Hmm. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Men develop the most peculiar fascinations. Sometimes their fascination seem to take control. Till there's very little man left. <laughs> oh, it's like that awful traitor long ago. He coveted what he did not have, and it drove him mad. What a curious conundrum. <laughs> the writhing ruin keeps searching as we speak. Searching for its heart's desire. Well, she employ she implies right there that the writhing ruin is the traitor from long ago. So again, maybe this is what she's implying. Maybe she's implying that Icarus Earth is Gwyn, or Gwyn's soul manifest in some way. Maybe she's implying that the writhing ruin is Seath in some way. Once they thought that. So interesting. Interesting to speak with her after we uh, have gone through the game and kind of read things a little bit closer. I knew you'd be. Um, where are we at with things? Can't level up anything I want to except for these, but I want to save the chunks. Yeah, but I think uh, Clohan should away. sell well. more things now because we've beaten. Nope. No interest. Suit yourself. You are blessed with a myriad of souls. Bearer of the curse, make your way to the castle. Um, let's level up first. I'm doing pretty good with everything else, so I think I'm just gonna kinda push some decks here. Alright. <clears throat> so now that we've uh Thank you. kind of uh gotten the souls here and we're ready to kinda go towards the end of the game, although there's quite a bit of game left. Uh, also, there's the DLCs. I might just keep those for later. Um, I'm not a fan of a lot of the D DLCs. Let me take that back. I love the DLCs. They might be the best thing in the Soul series. However, the, all three contain areas and bosses and things that are just distasteful to me. And so I don't enjoy, uh, like, 100%ing it all the time. But there are some interesting stories. However, they're all self-contained. They don't add a ton to the overall story. Um, I mean, they do. Uh, some of them do, uh, in some ways. But they all kind of are about um, old kingdoms and the stories of those old kingdoms. And 
I definitely will play them, but I'm thinking I might start uh, Dark Souls 3 playthrough first and just do the DLCs as one-off sub-series of these, just because there's so much content for this game. But, um, yeah, what I'd like to do now is do an episode of just completely, um, just, like, picking up all the last pieces before we just head to the castle and try it the best we can to move forward uh, and go straight to the end of the game. I'm sure there's always going to be, like, things that we need to go back and get, um, but we'll try to do a big loose ends episode next. Uh, and I forgot that what I want... Oh, there is another item down there. Yeah. Whatever. I wanted to end this episode out with, uh, checking out this, uh, wall right here. It is interesting to note that all the, um, doors like this in the game, at least all the ones we've found now, I can't remember if, the, if I'm going to speak out of turn here, but all of these are all in the gutter. Like, they're all, like, here and down all the way to Black Gulch. Aha! Dragon Talon. That's something. Cool. Witch Tree Branch and Witch Tree Belvine. Great Lightning Spear. So, I mean, if some of the stuff wasn't so haphazardly placed here, I would guess that this was significant. It might be still significant, but I feel like sometimes things are just placed in chests in behind doors, but that's it's definitely cool that so we have great lightning sphere or whatever, a Gwyn item, Gwyn magic, miracle. Then we have some witch catalyst and we have a hex. I mean, to me, that seems weird that those three were in here, but it also could be very interesting if it were intentional. Maybe we can put it together. Guides one to an unknown land. Legend has it that in the deepest reaches of the Black Gulch, behind a door locked from the inside, is a magnificent city built for a great slumbering dragon. This talon clearly dates to ancient times, but great vitality emanates from it still. So yeah, this is a key to get down to the DLC that I just was at. Um, and we'll learn about the Great Slumbering Dragon when we do that. Uh, and it says Ancient Time, so like the DLC of the first game, we will go back in time. When we go visit the, uh, the DLCs. Branch of a forest wandering witch tree, a catalyst for sorceries and hexes, now it is used as a weapon, but this was originally part of a witch tree. Witch tree bell vine, which sprout, that sprouts amongst old growth, the catalyst for miracles and hexes. A clerics who were ostracized devised this as an alternative catalyst for casting miracles. Most clerics who are stripped of their status are good for nothings but among them are powerful spellcasters who represented real threats to the establishment. Although not a proper catalyst, the Belvine is quite powerful. Um, yeah, so I, I will take it back. So obviously who was here, it casts hexes and it casts miracles. So we found a miracle here, we found a hex here, and we found two catalysts, which were for the condemned. This might be Dark Diver Grandel's stash. Um, Grendel? What's his name? We didn't learn his name yet, so. But let's see. A miracle that launches a great spear of lightning, said to be the legacy of an ancient clan whose leader was revered as the god of sun. The name of the class has been, clan has been lost. But the gross incandescence of our magnificent father shall never wane. Well, uh, wait, 
what did we get? Oh, we got a soul. Okay, so we got a sorcery. So that, yeah, that definitely doesn't make any sense. Whatever. Okay, anyway, thanks for watching. We'll do a Loose Ends video next time. Uh, see you then.